So the door of the church is open. So um, it's time to pay y'all. Time. There wasn't no church. Come on, Kobe. I'm not playing. You playing in this water? Water ain't shit to play in. You could drown in a cup of water. Shit. Hey, hold on, let me get down the now water, baby. Shit. Come on out of this water. But, hold on, baby. But, <laughs> y'all, y'all see how my church member happened. <laughs> but, but the doors of the church is open. So, y'all can't pay y'all tithes in your offering right now. So, um, hey, ma'am, y'all can't pay your tithes in your offering. Um, the water is cold. So I'm going down in this water. Who, Lord, have mercy! He high top of blah 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 blah. See, see, I in the water, y'all. The pastor in the water. See, hold on, y'all. The pastor finna walk around the pool. Hey, man. See, 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 see the pastor walking. <laughs> see the boy. <laughs> see the pastor. The pastor walking around the water. <laughs> See, y'all can't pay your tithes in your offering. See, pay your tithes in. <laughs> y'all pay your tithes in your offering. See, take me to the water. <laughs> take me to the water to be baptized. Let's start the show. <laughs> Back and we back on the grind. Holla at your folks. Woo! <laughs> we are your hosts, Steph, John, myself, Keith. Listen, John, this is the first time in a year and a half's time that we've been doing this show nonstop that we actually took a break. How did you feel taking a week off from the show? Weird, because I actually grabbed the show gear um, on Saturday. <laughs> I'm just so accustomed to whipping that stuff out, the hardware, mm-hmm. the microphone and the earbuds and the earphones, excuse me, and um, completely forgot. Oh, yeah. Everyone's out of town. <laughs> so uh, to say that I was in uncharted territory is an understatement, so. Um, but good to be back. It was, um, I guess every now and then it's, it, I think it's good to, uh, I guess, sort of, uh, refresh and recharge if Absolutely. that makes any sense. Uh, but mm-hmm. I did miss you guys and, um, putting together this awesome content. So good to be back in this seat. Yes. After a hundred and what, nine total episodes, I think we've done, including the sports show. It was good to catch a little break. Steph has been with us since, you know, permanently since the beginning of this year. So she's been on about, I mean, overall, she's been on about 40 damn episodes, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe more. (laughs) I think it's more than that. But I have listened to every single one since day one. So this is the first Tuesday in a year and a half that I didn't have a podcast to listen to. (laughs) How did that feel for you? It felt really weird. And I didn't realize how how many of my family members and friends really do listen because I got so many text messages. Here's a new episode. Here's a new episode. (laughs) And I was like, y'all don't pay attention on Facebook because we keep Uh posting, we reposted. There was no new episode this week. Well, why? Well, it was foreshadowed for weeks, actually, that we weren't going to yeah. be uh, posting everything. And I, I mean, I forgot, um, but that was just a, me being a creature of habit. I think they thought we were joking. I don't know. But they were kind of upset that there was no good episode. <laughs> but a lot has happened since the last time we spoke with everybody, hasn't it? I, I would hope so. 
Keith, are you still Keith. speechless over there? Or did we lose him? Is I don't he know. having technical difficulties? Today? I hope not. Because it's usually me. Uh oh. Oh, I think it is. <laughs> it's him. I think it's him. And, uh, <laughs> the crazy thing is, it's still recording. Uh huh. But we we're gonna let it roll. All right. This this reminds me of of last Saturday. <laughs> last Saturday. Yeah. Saturday, but yeah, last Saturday before last. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I'm gonna let him come back and tell it though. I'm gonna let him tell his own story. <laughs> if he, if he if he can make it back. Well, he did mention that he it, it, he may have technical difficulties due to the weather. Right. He did so. say that, but we're still rolling. <clears throat> Oh wow! And, and now you're sounding a, a, a bit um, like Wally there. Really? Yeah. Oh no. Well, not now. It cleared up. Oh, okay. I think because I turned my head away from the mic. Okay. Wow, this is weird. We this we is... usually lose me or you. <laughs> we never lose Keith. <laughs> oh my gosh! Let the me. Funny text thing him. is, he hasn't even texted back. No, Let us he know has that not. Completely vanished. Oh wow! Wow, ladies and gentlemen, this is a the short desk <laughs> podcast first. <laughs> no, <laughs> the biggest sound box on the entire show is unavailable. I mean, should I go ahead and give the the listeners our city? I wait. I don't. I don't know what to do. <laughs> We usually let him host and and roll I know. with it. So. And this is the this is the peril of live, but not live um, uh, recording. Right. Uh, um. So yeah, we you know I'm ready to talk about all that's happened since the last time we talked to everybody, and he's gone. And like you said, he's not even texting back. So. All right. But these games tonight, like who? What are your who are your picks for the games? Now? You said it was Philadelphia, Minnesota. Yes, and um, Tennessee and Buffalo. Buffalo. Well, I'm going to go yeah, with Buffalo. Buffalo off the top because mm-hmm. Buffalo looked like world beaters uh, the past couple oh, of weeks. Oh, man. Buffalo's going to go all the way. They're going to be Super Bowl champs <clears throat> this season. Um, for whatever reason, I've been sleeping on Josh Allen. Well, I haven't been, but I, I guess I haven't been paying much attention, but. Mm-hmm. After uh, watching what they uh, they did to LA in the first game, now granted it's only the first game, so I don't. Well, we're gonna run it back again. I um, <laughs> <laughs> it's some bad, bad, ugly, ugly weather, and the Lord is probably telling me I don't need to be on here. I usually don't play around when it's lightning, but we got a show to record, so I kind of yes. lost some power there. But we back on there. As yes. I was telling the listeners, um, uh-huh. a lot has happened since they last heard from us. Would you like to take the lead on that, Keith? <laughs> yes. I love it. A, a lot has happened. Um, there's a reason why we were not on for the episode last week. Reason being is that my wife, my beautiful, wonderful loving wife who uh, after you know 12 years of us being together you know never ceases to amaze me surprise me amaze whatever and uh, she threw a surprise 40th (laughs) birthday party for me that believe it or not If you know me, you know, I know and, you know, I'm supposed to know everything. I had Mm -hmm. no idea that this was going on. And on top of that, for the very first time, which is very weird to say, because if you hear us here on the podcast, you would think that we've been knowing each other for most of our lives. But this was the first time that John and I had ever met Steph in person. (laughs) And the first time all three of us was in a room together. Yes. Steph came all the way down from Atlanta, along with Drew, who you've heard on the show before. I know Drew, he came down. We also 
had some people come from um, Mississippi, you know, out of town, in town. Um, it was just, it was amazing. It was I'm amazing. still speechless. Yeah. Um, and the best part about it was she had been planning this since January and he had no clue. We've been holding this secret in for nine months. <laughs> I honestly thought his precognition would kick in at mm-hmm. some point because he f- somehow has this crystal ball and can see <laughs> in different time slots in the future. Yes. And I thought he would have uh, recognized that something was off and mm-hmm. oh yeah, I just know they're going to throw me a surprise birthday party and I'm not no. going to be surprised. But this, It was back, I think in June, I was talking to my mom and I forgot what she was like, does he know? And I was like, no, I don't think he knows, ma. Well, I'll tell you, the funny part about it all, <laughs> and again, you know, I, I, I'm I'm just I'm just grateful because you know so many people showed up, so many people, you know, showed their love to me, and again, I just cannot continue. You know, I I just cannot stop showing love to my wife for doing this, and even with. You know, not just putting the, the the party together. My sister helped her. You know, my 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 parents and my in laws kicked in as well. Friends keeping things away from me. John was her. What do you call it? Consigliere. There you go. Consigliere. Consigliere. Yeah. Um, with who should be invited and who wasn't invited. Thank God. You know, there there was one person that I did not want invited. But John told her to Teddy. invite him. John told him to invite him. And uh, thank God their spouse told my wife no. Uh, because it could have turned into a Michael oh Jordan God. Hall of Fame moment oh when God. I got up there, when I gave my speech after everybody gave their speech. Because first thing I would have said is, what are you doing here? How do you go from gratitude to pettiness? Um, then there was one person. Now, John said... <laughs> Telling my wife, yeah, invite these people, invite these people. There was one person, John said, absolutely not. <laughs> no, I was told he said, hell no. <laughs> Get it right. But y'all, how do you go from, from gratitude to pettiness? I, well, I just had to put that in there. I, I just, my wife, and even so, my wife still was uh, the bigger human being, the bigger heart, <clears throat> and reached out for, you know, that party to come. And like I said, that, that just shows you. And well, I'll say it was more John because my wife was like on the fence about that one person and their family. But John pushed it and said, you know, let's, let's be the bigger person. Now the other person, John didn't want to be the bigger person, but for that one, <laughs> John was, uh, you know, wanted to be the bigger person, but and you understand and, and why. And you understand. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I absolutely understand why I'm glad it didn't happen because I would have made everybody in there uncomfortable. Well, I take that back. John would have probably started laughing because he, <laughs> 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 he knows me real well, but it would not it would not have turned out to be a joyous occasion if that person had showed up. And I'm going to just leave that there. But again, my wife put this all together. And as I'm talking to you guys, she sent out a save the date and the invite. And then, you know, you got to see this save the date. It's very nice The invite. It has two sides pictures, one with me as a little kid in my red sailor looking outfit and you know me with some of my teeth missing and (laughs) me on the other side of my onesie doing something bad and me as an adult and then on both the um the invite and the uh save the date don't forget to download listen and share the podcast (laughs) yes Yes. (laughs) you know um i'm just so I'm so blessed with the amount of love that I received for that day for you guys coming, you know, near and far to celebrate 
that day with me. That was actually my birthday on Saturday Mm -hmm. and just so blessed for having an amazing, an amazing, beautiful, thoughtful, loving wife. Oh, man. Just took the time out to do this for me. And the funny part about it is where we had it at. It was at some wine year vineyard wine wine winery 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 there you go winery out there. <laughs> and, we're gonna have some class <laughs> i said vineyard vineyard, vineyard winery, winery, winery. Winery. Listen, and i'm gonna tell you what what i said <laughs> when i was at the table that had jasmine and drew rolling i said listen because i was watching the two of you i said that woman lives and breathes that man i said she rented out a whole winery for his birthday because i'm not gonna rent out taco bell for these niggas i've been dealing with wow so, Okay. <laughs> Let's stay positive and not petty. <laughs> no, I know you aren't talking. Uh, but I, I had to scroll back because, you know, I, I love Iris now. Like, I had to scroll back to the the first message she sent about the party. And I'm going to read it real quick. Sorry, Iris. Mm-hmm. She was like, hey, beautiful. I was reaching out to you because I am planning a surprise birthday party for Keith in September. And this came through uh, the end of January. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of planning ahead of time and gathering addresses. I know you stay in Atlanta. However, I wanted to send you some love and still invite you to come. He will be turning 40 in September, so it is a big deal. Please don't say anything for I am still working hard and getting a place and planning the party. But I would love for you to be there, boo. And I sent her my address. I said, absolutely, because I would not miss this for the world. And I... At that moment, like she hadn't even given us a date. At that moment, I booked my hotel. Wow. Wow. Well, yeah. I'm so appreciative of you. I'm so appreciative of John, everybody that came. Um, you know, she, you know, rented out this whole winery. And the funny thing about this winery is that earlier this year, I, one of the people that I follow on Instagram, I don't know if it was Mike, just POTUS or somebody, but they went out to this winery and I showed it to her. I said, hey, did you know this is in Kissimmee? I don't know where it is, but they say it's in Kissimmee. And she said right then and there, she panicked. She's like, oh, my God, he's figured it out. He's figured it out. He's figured it out. <laughs> and I didn't have I had no idea. I just saw it and I was like, you know, we don't. We don't drink like we used to, but I was like, this would be awesome. You know what I'm saying? Just to go to because we hadn't been to a winery in a while, but I had no idea. And she was kind of blowing me off. I'm like, why the hell is she blowing me off for? But I was like, whatever. You know, I'm trying to bring you an idea to take you somewhere. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying that in my mind, but um, it was a beautiful occasion. People gave up and gave speeches at I. I, I was sitting there and my, I heard my mom ask my aunt was like, is he crying? And mm. I, I was. And the reason why, and let me say this, let me go back and say this as, as, as I had my petty moment with the, 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 the party that my wife did not invite mm-hmm. that, that one single person, they didn't need to be there anyways because they were not part of you know they weren't they had not really been a main a long mainstay in the life you know for i didn't we didn't really know this person so when john told her hell no it wasn't like dissing someone that has been in my life for a very long time or anything like that it was just like they don't fit (laughs) you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. And, and a lot of things escaped my wife too so um, if you are upset with her not inviting you, just know you're upset with me mm-hmm. because anything that any strife or ill will towards her is with me. I want to say that and I want to make that clear. So she didn't intentionally go out of her way not to invite people. She consulted with John because she didn't know and John said yes to everybody except for one single person, <laughs> one single, <laughs> just one person, not a family, not, it was one person that doesn't have a family. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Ooh. it wasn't bringing somebody with them, shall I say? So mm. 
but I wanted to say that. Now, back to the party. Um, my mom asked my aunt, said to me, she said to my aunt, is he crying? And I tell you what, I'm not a person that shows that type of emotion a lot. But I told my mom, and, you know, I was saying this to someone else. I, I don't remember who it was. Forgive me if I don't call your name out. But at, usually when people, you know, give me some type of praise or props for something that I've done for them or, or you know, anything, I'm able to, oh, you're welcome. Brush it off. Move on to the next thing. Right. Mm-hmm. This moment, I was trapped in my seat and I had to digest all of that in one sitting and I became full. Mm-hmm. And there was nowhere for it to go but up and out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, not know, knowing, I, I, and, 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 and I'm very much aware, I'm, I'm, I'm cognizant of the the impact that I've had on some people's lives. I know that, but to sit there and have to take it, take all of that. He did this and this and this. It was so much that I, I, it was so much for me to swallow at one time. It was just too much. And so the emotions just poured and it got worse as not worse in the sense of as far as horrible to listen to, but worse as far as the, the tears coming out uh, as more people continue to come up, you know, and I'm just like, Oh God, I can't take this no more. You know, John got up there cracking his voice and shit. And it was like, Oh no. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I I didn't want to speak. I was like, no, no, this is not, you know, and, and I was told that if I did not, I was going to get called out. And um, one thing (laughs) I know is that when a, you know, sorry, Iris, when a Puerto Rican woman tells you get up, (laughs) <laughs> um, I've learned that the hard way, so yeah, I was yeah. like, you know, let me. Yeah, let she me was go. gonna be calling people out. Yes. Um, you know, you all got up there and just it, it was just it was just so much. So I, I got a bit emotional, but everything was wonderful. We had a photo booth, had a DJ, had excellent food that they catered there at the place. Uh, my wife got the the, the place uh, the winery to to make it was great food Mm -hmm. um the cupcakes were phenomenal that she had my wife after everything when she was like iris was like uh you know what we didn't do i was like what's that sing happy birthday (laughs) we didn't we really didn't (laughs) but we had a phenomenal day and then the day after uh we kept poor Steph hostage the whole day. She didn't get listen, to watch her, her Eagles game. It was worth it. I had an amazing <laughs> time with you all from brunch to us riding around. I, you know, got to see Pops and Uncle Bubba go at it in person. So that was... I'm sorry I missed all that. I don't even need a Christmas gift now. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. She and, got to um, see them live know, and in color. Listen, your your mom is amazing. I mean, it yes. was just like sitting in Christine's house. Um, <laughs> so wonderful. yeah, it was it was great. I had a, a great time. Kobe and Dolly are now my best friends. Yes, so. yes, yes, yes. <sighs> but I, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart to everyone that was able to attend. And again, for my wife, um, if she did not uh reach out to you, it wasn't because it was intentional, it was just <laughs> excuse me her mind you know it was so many people she's like oh my god i just realized i didn't invite this person oh my god i just realized i didn't invite this person and it wasn't intentional you know what i mean everybody it it just it just happens and that happens when you're throwing you know a party like that it just was not it wasn't intentional on her part so um but it was just wild and crazy and then then we left sunday night the reason why we were not recording real quick is that my wife and I went on a weeks long cruise with Disney. I know y'all probably saying, Hey, he cruise all the time. Yes. This is our third cruise of the year, but this was the first time my wife and I had taken a vacation, just her and I, no family. Our, I mean, I say no family, our son, um, our parents, nobody went. It was just her and I, this was the first time since uh, the pandemic started. Um, we actually were in Charleston as things were getting shut down in 2020. So uh, this was the first time 
that we taken a vacation. We enjoyed ourselves. We had a, a, a drink class that we signed up for every night. We did all the trivia, bingo shows, <laughs> the theater shows, watched a movie, watched a Pinocchio <laughs> movie they were showing in one of the theaters. Um, it was phenomenal. So thank you guys for everything. Shout out to everyone that attended. Thank you, too, for being a part of it, Steph. You know, it was just wonderful. Her new nickname is Big Yella. And, uh, <laughs> Why am I Big Yella? We just go keep it at that. We just go keep oh it at God. Big Yella. So a lot has happened this week, the last two weeks that we have been gone. We're going to try to cram in as much as we can without taking up so much time and you know do what we do you know what i mean but thank you for allowing me the first you know beside the technical difficulties uh first 20 minutes of the show to kind of get my stuff off but i i was before before we go into the next segment the party, what what were your, your final thoughts on the party? John, let me start with you. What was your final thoughts? And then, Steph, what was your final thoughts? I, I uh, relish in the fact that uh, you were completely caught off guard and had no idea uh, that this entire operation had gone on and <laughs> in the backgrounds. Mm-hmm. Um, I also uh, recognize the fact that um, Iris is such a wonderful, amazing person. Um, not only did she put together this party? She put together this party by, uh, you know, adulting. And what that looks like is she had to work. And then on top of that, she was getting her bachelor's degree with all this stuff going on in the background. So I commend (laughs) you wholeheartedly for the Herculean effort to put together this entire event uh, without tipping off your husband. Oh man. So it is, it's, that was truly amazing. Um, but once again, I was um, uh, so happy that so many people showed up uh, and the amount of love and um, appreciation uh, for you. Uh, I was happy to see you uh, come up those stairs and be completely uh, left in suspended animation with your hands on your hips, <laughs> mouth wide open and your your eyes glassed over trying to hold back tears. It almost uh, brought tears to my eyes uh, watching you in that entire state. Um, But once again, wonderful venue, beautiful people. I'm I'm glad I had the opportunity to meet Steph, even though Mm -hmm. I'm (laughs) antisocial in nature. Um, It was wonderful meeting you. Wonderful meeting uh, Mr. Drew. Um, Omar, I'm glad you, uh, you made it out there. Hadn't seen you in quite some time. Um, so many other people uh, that I had not seen uh, in a while. Uh, you hadn't seen Dwayne in a well. No, I had, well, we, well, we saw we, we went to we went to, we went to breakfast, we went to brunch or something earlier yeah. this year. Yeah, that's right. So I was happy to see Dwayne. Um, there were some reconciliations that took place there. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. Um, it was once again, it was it, it was a nice uh, endorphins all through my body. It was great. It was great. Um, yeah. So uh, uh, that's uh, that's it. Uh, hard out <laughs> on that one. That's all it. right. And and before you begin, stuff real quick, I do want to say this real quick. I had my, the way that she set it up when we left here. At first, she was going to drive, but she took so long. She, she had me drive. I was already. She knew I would have been out of it with her driving. So when we <laughs> went. She was like, okay, yeah, we're going to Tampa. I said, oh, okay, we're going to Burns. That's my, you know, my favorite steakhouse. I'm like, oh, okay, we are going to Burns. And then she wouldn't, she had the the place where we were going on her phone. So I didn't know where I was driving to. And then when we took one of the highways there and we got off near Disney, I said, oh, we're going to Disney. And when we got out to the place, then I, then I saw when we got to the street, it said Outback. I said, well, why are we going to Outback? There's an Outback over by us, and I don't really eat Outback, but hey, it's the thought that counts, you know? So I was like, okay. So then we get all the way back there into this beautiful, beautiful place. I still didn't think anything of it because I saw the sign, winery. I said, okay, there's some people out there, some winery. 
you know, no big deal. And so we, the, when we go inside, the elevator's out of service. So I'm already out of it. Now I said, wait a minute, I got to go up these steps. So <laughs> as soon as we go up the steps, I, 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 it didn't dawn on me. She was like, they were playing your favorite song from Prince, Raspberry Beret, I believe it was. Mm-hmm. Didn't pay it any mind. And I couldn't see anything because her caboose was blocking everything. And so she turns around real quick and throws these uh, blindfolds on me. And I was like, okay, what in the hell is going on now? And so that's how that happened. Um, Yeah. And so I walked into what John said. I was speechless. But Steph, your final thoughts on the party? Uh, First of all, another shout out to the amazing Mrs. Hardrick. Um, because, baby, listen, uh, all I got to say is when it's her turn to turn 40, you better come correct. Iris, I got your, your back on that. Hey, I got your back. Because you, you can't outdo that. Listen, I can't correct for her 35th. Her 35th. Yeah. You're not going to top that, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just letting you know. I did. I, I know. I can't 35 was pretty good, too. 35 was very good. Listen, that was, it was beautifully It was planned. a production. Her 35th birthday was up. <laughs> he letting it know. He, that's so Virgo of him. He letting, her know, letting us know it was a production. Hey, it was a, it was a production. <laughs> you hear me? Her, her 35th, it was a masquerade theme party. Mm-hmm. It was oh. a night to remember. See, okay. that's what we're doing for my mom for her 70th. We're doing a masquerade theme. Oh, that's going to be beautiful. Thing. Yes. Beautiful. So, um, you know, it, I just, for me, um, I was really, really because when I came in, everybody's like, "Are you Steph from the podcast?" So I have a new name. I'm not even Steph Morgan anymore. I'm Steph from the podcast. Steph from the podcast. Um, but just for everyone to show me so much love, you know, and I was like, I have a whole new family now. So yes. you know, I, I was grateful, but I was so excited about uh getting there and you know surprising you and stuff that I left your gift here on my table so I gotta put it in there. <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> I that, I left I left the, the shoes. Gift. Yeah I left the shoes that went with the dress. So I had some shoes in my trunk that I had to throw on that it really didn't go with the dress. I was just so excited because um as I've told everybody numerous times my flight got canceled kind of last minute so I ended up driving to Orlando um and but it was so beautiful and there was so much love in the room and I just thoroughly enjoyed it but most of all I enjoyed the look on your face and I was just so glad that you got all of your flowers that you you deserve and more um because it's just all of that was just a testament to who you are as a person as a son as a friend as a brother as a husband as a father as a nephew um and you know you you really did deserve all of that. So I'm glad you were in a place where you couldn't run, you had to take it. And then when I got up to speak, it's like my words kind of lost me because over the last seven years, for someone who I had never met face to face before, like you have been amazing to me. Um, you know, so I I thank you for being a, an amazing friend, a wonderful brother. Um, so, you know, I, I was kind of losing my words and then I was like, okay, yes, let me not rattle <laughs> on. And then I looked over and you got kind of teary eyed. So I had yes. to kind of look around because I know I would have cried too, cause I'm a water bucket. Yes. Um, yes. but I'm so glad that you got all that you deserved and more. So, um, well, thank you. That thank was amazing. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And I was so glad to finally meet my co-hosts. Yeah. Even though, you know, John is antisocial as he said before, but <laughs> We're not going to get into that. Right. We're going and, now. We, and, and I was threatened because I was told by two or three people that if I ever, ever in life say anything bad about myself ever again, mm. they're going to beat my, you know what? So, mm. well, yeah. And you need to be held to that too. Yeah. <laughs> Dick Yella. All right. Oh gosh, I cannot stand y'all. <laughs> let's jump into more. Let's just jump into the show now. So as I said earlier, we're going to you know, really start digging deep in. We done talked enough about, you know, the party and all the goings on with that. So we had to bring our brother Rock back on. What's up, Rock? You know, I was about to say Rock in the building, but, I, I, you know, I'm a Southern boy, so I can't say that. Um, <laughs> you can. You can say that. 
<laughs> so yeah, I'd say rock, rock, uh, back in this thing. There we go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Glad to have you back with us once again. So mm-hmm. reason why I want to bring you on, like, you know, I was talking to, we were talking earlier. There's been a lot that has gone on in the past two weeks mm-hmm. since they have last heard our voices here on the show. And one of the things that have, that has happened is the release of this new movie called The Woman King, starring mm-hmm. Viola Davis. Now, The Woman King is supposed to be a historical film about the Agoji, um, yeah. if I'm saying that correctly, the all-female warrior unit that protected the West African kingdom of Dahomey. Mm-hmm. Is there seen it? Dahomey? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, during the 17th to 19th century. So it's set in the 1820s. Viola Davis, she stars as a general who trains the next generation of warriors to fight their enemies. And so this movie was uh, directed by Gina Prince Bythewood. Mm-hmm. The story was written by Maria Be- Bello, Bello, Bello and Dana woman. Stevens. And another white woman. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to bring Rock on because I wanted us to discuss this movie. Now, this movie is getting a lot of hype because it is an all black cast, pretty much all black female cast. So Mm -hmm. a lot of people have, you know, it, it was number one this past weekend. I think it took in 18 million dollars at the box office, if I'm not mistaken. It was number one. Getting a lot of hype, especially within the black community for this movie. 19.1 million. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And before I get to you, Rock, John, Steph, have you guys seen it or were you going to go see this movie? Um, I go back and forth with it. Um, Okay. Today, I don't want to see it. It'll probably change tomorrow, but I have my reasons. Okay. Okay. John? Did you have I yours? I haven't seen it. Uh, my wife wants to see it and take my daughter to go watch okay. it. I'm on the fence. Okay. Mm-hmm. So when I first saw the preview, I said, "Oh wow, this is going to be, you know, pretty powerful movie." This is something that you know I've never seen anything like this. A depiction of black women, you know, other than Black Panther, but that was fictional, right? Mm-hmm. So I thought, hmm, this is going to be great. Great movie. My wife said, oh, I want to see this too. This is great. I love Viola Davis. You know, I'm like, yeah, I like her sometimes. But um, I was like, this is going to be great. And then Mr. Rock entered the chat. <laughs> and <laughs> Rock, can you explain and talk to us about maybe some misinformation about the story that okay. has been given to the public. And so we know what is really in the history books about this uh, kingdom nation of Dahomey and this tribe, these warriors, the Agoji. Can you mm-hmm. inform us? Uh, all right. So I'm not even, where, where do I start? So I'm not, I'm not even sure if the public is even really in, really and truly misinformed i think at this point people just want what they want and they don't even care about care about history which is kind of wild for this particular story right mm-hmm. um all right man so like y'all um i heard about the homie first back during the first black panther right but i never dug into him i saw the trailer with Viola davis i'm like okay cool let me you know this, this about the homie i heard about him beforehand let me start digging and man, once you, I mean, it, it don't even take long. It's not like you got to like read the, the line number three or something before you get to the real. I mean, it come out the gate. They were major slave traders that the homie kingdom uh, pretty much made their bread and butter off uh, the transatlantic slave trade. I'm going to just give you that the high points that just kind of just blew my mind. Right. So that was mm-hmm. the first one. Mm-hmm. All right. So they was a major player in the, in the slave trade. Right. Um, the other thing that blew my mind was, uh, once, uh, the Europeans wanted to stop trading slaves, that the homies went to war with them to keep, keep trading. They wanted to keep trading, right? Who who wanted to stop? 
Uh, the Europeans, the European, you know, they, you know, they kind of, I, I believe at this point they had enough slaves in America and the Caribbean where they could kind of start reproducing on their own. So mm-hmm. I, I, now I'm, 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 uh, from what I read, I'm kind of putting one or two together that I believe they had enough. So they didn't necessarily need to trade as much, um, because at that point they were already breeding, you know, breeding us. I hate to say it like that, but that's what it was. Mm-hmm. Um, so when they went, when, went along and I guess went to stop it, the homie was like, Hey, oh no, this is how we get our bag. So they wanted to go to war to, to keep it going on. Wow. Um, I know, man, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, what else? Uh, uh, I mean, they, they had a surplus. I mean, you always think about, um, uh, was give us us free. What was that? Amistad. Amistad I always yeah. think of, yeah. I always think about Amistad, you know, that the infamous scene when they're on the, um, boat and they're about to get caught. So they push all those slaves off with the chains. Mm. Dude, let me, I'm going to read this to you. It's real quick. I'm going to read this to you. It said that the homie was so effective in slave catching that they had a surplus in slaves and had to perform mass slaughter rituals to properly cater to the European demand. They saw this as a humane way of disposing the surplus. Dude, I mean, the more I read, the more I'm like, hold on, they they, they can't possibly be trying to wrap this in black girl magic and sell it sell it to us as empowering. That can't be true. So I'm digging and I'm, man, I'm, it's just, the more you read, um, and they knew, they knew, they knew, they knew, they knew. Uh, and when I say they, I'm talking about the cast, right? So I'm going to run a few things out there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to run a few things out there, right? So um, when this movie was announced, it was announced um, shortly after. Oh, let me start even before that. What was the first the the first white lady who you said was the writer? I forgot her name off the top of my hand. Uh, um, Mary Maria Bello? Her. No, no, no. It's another one. What was the other one? Was uh, the, other the other one was Dana Stevens. That was the that was the writer. Now the director was Gina Prince Bythewood. Okay, it must be it's, it's two uh, white women, women writers. Uh, <coughs> Dana one Stevens of them. and Maria Bello. Okay, so it must be Bello then. Got to be Bello. So the story goes: Maria Bello goes to present day Benin in 2015. Right? She finds out the story of uh, the Dahomey Kingdom. Right? She's she brings right. So she brings it to um, Viola Davis in 2015 about the story. Now, just look at the context of that. A white woman went to Africa. She saw mm-hmm. this story about uh, the Dahomey Kingdom. I don't know how, but some kind of way she skipped past all the slavery stuff and thought it was a good idea to bring this story to Miss Viola Davis. Right mm-hmm. now, if it take a random person a few minutes, not even five to uh to start reading and, and look at the horrors. Mm-hmm. Viola Davis has been trying to get this movie made for seven years. Right? Seven years. Um it didn't really get legs until 2018 after Black Panther dropped. That's when they announced it in March. Um a, like a month after Black Panther Black Panther, mm-hmm. Black Panther March. That's when they announced it. Now here's now here's the now here's the real good good part. When they announced it, they announced it with Viola Davis and Lapita Nuango, right? Now check mm-hmm. the timeline. 2018, they announced it, right? Mm. 2019, Lupita does a documentary called Woman Warrior. The whole documentary is on YouTube. You can take a look at it. There is a section in there kind of towards the end, like the last 10 minutes or so, when they talk about the Dahomey Kingdom and the Goji Warriors. Lupita is in tears, right? Because I believe she comes, I know she's like a Kenyan kind of Latino, some kind of way, but I believe she was talking about her grandma or something like that, uh, one of her family members. She's in tears. Um, hearing the story about the Dahomey and what they did to other Africans, right? Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, a coincidence, 2020, Lupita has dropped out of the movie. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> right, right. So now, th- that's what I'm like looking at everybody. Everybody sideways, like, y'all know. It ain't nowhere in the world y'all don't know. And now you're trying to repackage this to, to you know, because I'm, I'm, I know you from, y'all from Florida. Um, African Americans and Caribbeans, in particularly, right, who come from the translated translated slave trade, mm-hmm. they probably sold us, bro. <laughs> I right. hate to be like that. Yeah. They probably sold us. If we go back deep enough, they probably sold us. And then you fast forward a couple hundred years later, and now they're trying to repackage this and wow. sell it as a as a hero. Dude, would they ever play with anybody else? Do I gotta say the obvious? Would no. they ever play with them like that? 
No, they would no. never play with them like that. They wouldn't even play with Americans and try to take like a jihad terrorist and make them nine eleven heroes. They wouldn't even no. play with America like that. No. But here we go with them. Do it's it's just mind blowing. And you know what? They do it because they know they can. Because not like you said, it made nineteen million. Yeah. People know because and when you bring it up, people try to say it's misogynoir. You just don't want to see black women this and and I'm like, dude. It, for me, if it, it's it's a few things out there that should be like, okay, we ain't playing with that. You know, we we ain't playing with that. You know, some stuff. All right, I get it, but other stuff is like, come on, man, come on, man. So, so yeah, and and and, and you know, it's, I'm always amazed. I did it like two or three times when uh, somebody said, "Hey, Rock, what do you think about movies?" Because I'm always I'm a movie guy, right? Mm-hmm. And, and and they say, "What do you think about going to the see this movie?" I like and I like my um my cousin in law. I like yeah, because he he got a little thirteen, fourteen year old girl. I said, look, if you want to just go in there just for the action, go for it. I'm sure you have a good time. Mm-hmm. But just just go take a go just take a few minutes right quick and just go Google um the, the homie kingdom. He started mm-hmm. texting me back. He like, dude, stop playing. I like, yeah, keep going, keep going. Wow. He like, dude, stop playing. And he said he wanted to take his daughter because uh she's in the history. And I said, mm-hmm. you know what, man? Uh, just like you, John, you say you you want to take your daughter, right? I I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm a hundred percent curious about how not grown folks, but most of younger girls, like teenage girls age, who see this movie at first and then afterwards do the research and see the truth about them. I'm really curious, like, what, I, I'm, like, how does that manifest or what's the response? You know what I mean? I would love to just be a fly on the wall in that conversation, like maybe a history teacher talking mm-hmm. to them, mm-hmm. you know, something like that. So it, it just, um, Man, it's it's just wild. Wow, it's just it's just wild. And you and and you're right because when they when you get a you know when these actors get these parts, and you said Viola's been trying to get this push for years now, you know mm-hmm. she had to read up on it and what that real story was. Why would mm-hmm. you want to push something like this? Right, right. And the funny thing is, so this is the spin that they're putting on it, right? You know, cliche Hollywood, it's, it's typical Hollywood. When they do, like, period pieces, like a, a Jim Crow or something, mm-hmm. and, you know, black people going through the cliche racism situation, what do they always throw in there? A good white person. A white right? person and savior. Mm-hmm. Yes, the white savior. Yeah, they always throw the good white person in because that's who the white audience can kind of attach themselves to and say, well, that's who I, that's who I would be if I was there, right? right? They've taken that template. And that's exactly what they've done with the with the Goji um, Warriors, right? So they're wow. the good white people. I mean, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, quote unquote, good white person, and everything that's going on bad. Because so pretty much the Dahomey King, and the, they want they want to keep it going. But Viola Davis, who was a fictional character in there, and and she, they're the ones kind of second guessing. Now I watch spoilers. I haven't seen the movie, but I watch spoilers and list of like I don't know, ten to fifteen spoilers, just to make sure I know what I'm talking about. Um, they're pretty much the ones second guessing and kind of going to the king, trying to get him to, you know, uh, I think trade for, um, I forgot the other product, but trade for some other kind of product instead of doing the slave trade. Like they're the good white person in this movie. And it's just the, the tribe, the, the, the female the, warriors. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Wow. The yeah. Yep. They, they, and dude, those warriors, dude, they was like, they was, they was ruthless, man. I'm, they was ruthless. Um, I can't even think about all the stuff that they did, man. But they they was ruthless. They was ruthless. I mean, to the point, like I said, they was trading trading other Africans for guns and stuff. If you look at old pictures oh of, of them, th- they actually have guns. They have rifles that they got from trading <laughs> trading uh, other black folks. So I could go on for yeah. yeah. It, it 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 is just it's wild. It's wild, and honestly, it's just disgusting from Hollywood. And I like, like I said, I look at, I look at Viola sideways, man. Like you, bro, I can't even get upset at Hollywood, right? Because this is what they do. I'm upset mm-hmm. at the black people that attach themselves to this. Right, 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 it, it, right, right. Well, you know, they they try because they know they could try us, and you, and for the most part, like if if I guess they would, they should be our first line of defense. Like I feel like Denzel, I feel like Denzel being the back room cussing folks out. Like don't yes. even come at me with that. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You know right. he does. Yeah. <laughs> like they, they know who they could go to to get this stuff done. Like John Boyega, I hate to say it, man. John Boyega, I know he was going hard with the Black Lives Matter stuff, but John Boyega participated and led the biggest ruse, the biggest okie doke in cinema history against black people with that Star Wars. He had us thinking we had a black Jedi 
he ran around. He got <laughs> he got us all well, crunk. Well, you know what? It seems like from his interviews, man, it seems like he didn't even know because he said he would never play that role again. Like it seemed like they okie doked him after that second one. That third one, he it, it seemed like he just got okie doked. Well, no, no. What, what I'm saying is, if even if you stick with the first one. He he shot that whole movie, so he know at the end of that movie he got cut down in the back, and old uh-huh. girl wind up doing the fight. He knew that the whole yeah. time, but during the press the press tour, he was running around like he was the Jedi, like and uh, he was like, yeah, yeah, it had, that's right. Yeah, had right. us all geeked up. Thought we had a brother with a lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> so, but so yeah, okay. So yeah, so, but, uh, let me. So with with that being said, right. You're seeing all the black celebrities. I, I've seen a lot on Twitter. I don't know if you've seen it, John or Steph, where some of these black celebrities are coming out and saying that they're buying out movie theaters yes. for black people to go see this movie. And that blows my mind. What? Boy. Who in the hell left the gate open? That blows my mind because you know me. I've said this several times. I get tired of, and this isn't necessarily that type of movie. I get tired of us playing these oppressive roles. Oh my I God. get tired. That's why I never went and saw Selma. Mm-hmm. I not going to see Till. Not going to see Till. I hesitated to see 12 Years a Slave, and I now wish I had not. Um, oh, I yep. walked out of 12 Years a Slave. I walked and, out of it. Yeah. And not to mention that, you know, Viola Davis, for one, you know how I feel. I love Viola, but I hate her acting. She's a horrible actress. Um, mm. Viola plays every role the same way, like she's beaten, battered, and illiterate. And it Except for uh, what's her name in, in a DC, uh, in a DC yeah. movie, Amanda, yeah. Amanda Waller. Oh, Amanda okay, Waller. Yeah. yeah, I mm. thought she meant uh, on the um show, mm. but um, and then two, they went to Viola Davis with this because I, Viola is a safe black. Mm. Mm. She's mm-hmm. a safe black. She can she can round up black and white audiences. They would have never gone to this with Angela Bassett. No, no, Angela wasn't having it. Angela they would have never gone to Vanessa Bell Calloway. No. Mm-mm. What's my sister from um uh, from uh, uh the Will Smith movie with the with the Venus and Serena Williams? Um, oh, the, and the wife. Ellis, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think she would have played that either. No, they would have never gone to Lynn Whitfield with this. No, no, they went no, to the no. safe. Black, because somebody uh they they had a meme going around about Lynn. They said Lynn will play play evil, but she'll never play broke. Yeah, <laughs> she's not gonna play oppressive either. And Viola mm. will do that because Viola wants everybody to like her. I don't know her; I could be wrong, but that's how she comes across. I love her as a person, but I don't like her as an actress. Vi- Viola, oh, to me, Viola has an air of desperation for Hollywood. That yes. Angela Bassett, like the, mm, Angela Bassett mm. doesn't have. Like Angela Bassett, she just regal. Like I'm here, yeah. and you go yeah. love me, and y'all mm-hmm. go respect me. And Viola always feel like she's kind of like, yeah, uh, like I need, you know, like a, like a, trying to pull you in, like trying to appear. You know what? That's how her, she came across. Film- Filmography. I'm sorry. Her filmography represents that because mm-hmm. Angela Bassett, as regal as great as a actress as she is, she doesn't have a long history of films she she was in. You know what I mean? Compared mm-hmm. to Viola Davis, where for the past what seven eight years, it seems like she's in like three movie three or four movies a year. Because I, yeah, I didn't watch The Help. I'm not watching that. <laughs> um, but you know, with with. Viola, I don't know if you all saw the interview that aired with her and Oprah last week. That desperation came through in that interview. It's like, oh, I want to be liked. Oh, I want to be liked. Please like me. Please like uh, me. Like, that's how it comes across. And I don't like it. So, because, and- you know, she, I refuse to watch her as Michelle Obama, too. But from the <laughs> clips and stuff I saw, I was like, this ain't it. Like, she made herself, in, in my opinion, and I know the ladies are going to drag me again and I don't care. She made herself look like a complete fool. She did mm. with she the really facial did. expressions, and I'm like, mm. "Why you do Michelle like that?" I, Michelle don't, mm. yeah. Hey, but real quick, uh, um, Steph, mm-hmm. to my understanding, this isn't like an oppressive movie. They they badass warriors. It's like three hundred. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. They that's the marketing warriors. tool. But yeah. it, oppressive in the way that you know they are selling blacks. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, but, th- but yeah. that's not how they're going to market that movie, oh, and that's nah. not what they're going to show not. in the movie. Of yeah, like they not. they address it from the from the spoilers uh, mm-hmm. I listened to. Like they address it and they touch on it, 
but they're not really going deep yeah. into it. Like they run off and save a, a few people, but for the most part, they're not really going deep into it. Not, not you know, because our perspective is, hold on, y'all the ones that sold us. We want to hear more about that part over there, mm-hmm. and it seems like they're not really touching, like going at going as uh deep on that part with it. Mm-hmm. So it's it's you know, I, you know, Viola, man, mm-hmm. I, I be trying to give her a chance, but she just. Because, you know, I don't want to be labeled as a pick me. Well, I don't care. But, you know, if this were truly a movie about empowering Black women and being supportive and positive, I'm here for it. Now, I'm going to give you a great example. Um, This wasn't a particularly empowering movie. Well, it was in a way because it was Black women telling their, their true life stories, their tragedies and stuff for color girls. Oh man! I, I watched, girls. yeah, I watched, and I fully Jeez. supported that movie only because I mm. read the book. And you know, I'm not saying that other women don't go through trauma. I'm not saying that black men don't go through trauma. But for a movie that really highlighted black women's trauma, and you had men in the movie, Hill Harper's character that was supportive of his wife. You know what I'm saying? He knew her past. He wasn't holding it against her and stuff like that. Like I love that about the movie. I'm here to support stuff like that. I'm here to support um, movies where black women are are shining and in a good light and stuff like this. I don't want to go see this. Mm-hmm. I'm I mean, not gonna, with you. Yeah, I'm not going to knock anybody for wanting to, but I don't want to. I'm I'm going to watch the action scenes when I find a good bootleg. Yeah, that's what? What it is. Wow. <laughs> so I, yeah. let me ask this question. I'm going to go around. John, you just heard this perspective of what the true story is. How do you feel now about the whole, you know, you were saying earlier that your wife wanted to see it. Your daughter wanted to see it. How do you feel now? Rock, I want to thank you for uh, (laughs) (laughs) digging a little bit deeper and wanting to be informed. Um, Because honestly, I probably wouldn't have looked into this any deeper if you not stated what you happened to find out about uh, the true history uh, mm-hmm. of this particular tribe and um, their efforts to monopolize uh, or capitalize on uh, black lives in the slave trade or the transatlantic tra- slave trade. So um, it's wild. Being, what's that? I say it's wild. It's wild. When you read yeah. That yeah. And um, I wasn't totally sold on it when I initially heard about it. I thought it was nice. Um, but that's not something that uh, was ca- that I thought would have been, you know, for my palate, to be honest with you, um, mm-hmm. outside of what I know now. And now that I know uh, the true history of this particular tribe mm-hmm. and the atrocities that took place, uh, coupled with the fact that uh, they had a surplus in order to humanely deal with uh, the surplus and the tr- slave trade is to. Uh, murder a, a whole bunch of black folks is uh, absolutely wild to me and that they wouldn't include that uh, in this I guess this what docufilm whatever the hell you want to call it is uh, wild to me as you mentioned before so mm-hmm. having said that I more than likely will not patronize this movie one bit uh, if my wife, my daughter want to go see it, that's fine. But I can't, for whatever reason, uh, look at this uh, <laughs> with a non-critical lens. Because uh, otherwise, to me, it's just it, the entire story is just very disingenuous and uh, beyond misleading. Shit. It, it, I like how you said patronize, because that's the part that um, I remember when people was talking about the NFL boycott. And I, and I was always saying, hey, it's a way you can still see your NFL but not patronize it, right? And I like black mm-hmm. folks. We we know about bootlegs. So suddenly <laughs> right. folks and fire sticks, you know. So, yeah. you know, I, I wouldn't, you know, I, I don't want to say, you know, I don't want to say not to go see it or not to watch it. Well, you know, but I just, you know, I, I would say I don't, I would, I would advocate for people not to spend money, like not spend money, but just bootleg it. If you want to see it, just yeah. bootleg it. Yeah, absolutely. I'll wait till it comes on a, one of those streaming apps or, or, or whatnot, but I'm, I'm not going to hop in my car and go online, uh, Fandango, or go directly to the movie theater to purchase any tickets to see this movie. Because Hollywood is all about money, man. They're all yeah. about money. And, and pretty much your t- people buying tickets is us 
uh, what is it, uh, agreeing or um, yes. confirming their deci- confirming their decisions in the product that they that they created. Yes, us buying and the ticket for is, more, right? And pushing for that that's the key part because if this made, I mean, it made eighteen million. They probably need to make really like closer to one twenty five or something to break even. Mm-hmm. But if, if this was a, a out of the gate hit, dude, I would be so like concerned that they would feel they could pluck any any story from africa mm-hmm. uh, them, and just try to sell it to us that's right you know and and remember we was talking last time about them using um the desperation of lack of representation against us mm-hmm. that's exactly what they're doing right now yeah that's exactly what they're doing right now because i'm let, let's flip the script let's be for real if this was a gang of african brothers black men who raped killed and sold everybody into slavery it would be dead in the water but black men have had that representation Sisters mm-hmm. have it. So that's mm-hmm. why they like they it's like turning a blind eye because it, it's our turn in the spotlight right now. Yeah. And it's wow. yeah, so mm-hmm. now real quick, uh Steph. Mm-hmm. You still on the fence? Uh I'm probably not gonna see. <laughs> I think I was kind of on the fence because I was kind of feeling a little pressured by other mm-hmm. women to go. Oh, um, but yeah, I, I'm just gonna have to be a pick me this time around. Well, I'm glad that Rock was mm-hmm. posting those things because I would have been. What would have happened with me is I would have went and saw it, and like I usually do with any you know autobiography document, whatever you want to call it, this movie, mm-hmm. I would have went back to look up after watching a movie, and immediately I probably would have been cussing up a storm. Because I went and spent my money to see this, and now I know what the real story is. So I do want to thank you for that, Rock, um, no for bringing this no to light for me um, mm-hmm. and educating me on this. Now, real quick, before we let you go, I did want to bring up one quick thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Little Mermaid um, controversy. Ooh, hey, child. Hey, 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 before we go to that, you know that that Russell Westbrook meme of him like eating and yes. <laughs> Hey, look, that, that, that's going to be Stephanie in the movie theater. <laughs> I'm in here watching, but I hope nobody else sees me. Listen. <laughs> so, yeah. the, the, the Little Mermaid trailer. Mm-hmm. So, um, as you all know, or have some of you may not know, there's a new movie for a live action Little Mermaid movie coming out under the Disney banner. Mm-hmm. And Ariel. The, the lead uh, character in The Little Mermaid is being portrayed by actress and singer. Uh, is it Holly or Haley? Haley. Haley. It's Haley. It's Haley, like Halle Berry. Haley. Okay, Haley Bailey. Uh, part of the, you know, she's in a singing group with her sister Chloe. Mm-hmm. And she's black. Mm-hmm. Well, the Little Mermaid trailer right now, as it stands, has they actually disabled the dislike button on YouTube because it has received 1.5 million dislikes on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, it isn't because it's a live action either. <laughs> uh, you know, the folks say mad, man. Yeah. So let's do a quick round table. John, any thoughts on the Little Mermaid trailer? Have you seen it? Has Kamora seen it. Um, you know, was she happy to see someone looks like her as a little mermaid? Or, you know, what were your thoughts on that? Uh, of course, you would go to me first. Of course. Of course. Uh, Big dope. I have no idea if she's seen the trailer. Uh, I can only assume she has. I don't know. Um, I Honestly, I haven't even looked at the trailer. I've just seen the still photo of her looking up in the sky. Mm-hmm. Um, Hallie Bailey uh, in her portrayal of Hello. Ariel. Yeah. There you go. Um, thank you for making fun of that cadence. Um, <laughs> Holla back. I'll do you. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> I had to do it. <laughs> uh, my thoughts as far as the outrage from mm-hmm. what white people? Yeah, they didn't want to see this black mermaid play this white mermaid character from Disney uh, story. Okay. Um, So it's okay for white characters to play black characters in Othello, like 
it's okay for white characters to play uh, Spanish uh, actor or actually Spanish historical figures in movies, uh, Japanese figures in movies, um, African. Um, I think I already mentioned that before. I guess it's okay. Um, and these are actual historical figures that actually live. Uh, Ariel, uh, she's never set foot on this fucking planet. <laughs> so, um, I think at this particular point, being at its base in the Caribbean, um, there are a lot of uh, black and brown folks in the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I don't see what the problem is. I, to, to, I, I guess anybody could could have played this. Uh, I mean, if Ariel, in my view, probably could have been Asian or Mongolian or um, <laughs> Australian. <laughs> it doesn't matter um, to me because yeah. she's a, a fictional character. So if it's a fictional character, you can just input whatever nationality or or ethnic background for that particular character. Uh, But to be outraged, uh, you know, and I, you know, I don't get it. I I don't I don't get it. I think it's foolish. And I mean, um, Ariel being white or black uh, is not going to help me uh, pay my mortgage at the end of the day. So (laughs) figure out figure out something else to be outraged over. Steph, thoughts on it? Um, where to begin? First of all, as talented as Hallie is, because, you know, out of the two, I love Chloe and Hallie, but to me, she's the the better singer of the duo. Mm -hmm. Um, so when she was chosen for this role, I was happy, you know, their first, uh, they've been acting for a long time, the two sisters. And it was so ironic, uh, the way Beyonce discovered them years after the older sister, Chloe had portrayed a younger Beyonce in a movie, Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and it was, it was just so crazy, but, um, these girls are very talented. Um, these are artists that they, they do all of their own music. They do their writing, they do their production, um, their own vocals, the two sisters. And um, um, Mrs. Knowles Carter puts a lot of money into these girls. So when when Hallie uh, was asked to come play Ariel, um, everybody backed her. You know, people were excited. But I think a lot of uh, the non-melanated folks really thought that this wasn't going to go through. Mm-hmm. So when that trailer dropped, let me tell you something. Those descendants of of slave rapists, they were hot. They mm. were bothered. They were mm. angry. And um, I'll tell anybody, I laughed about it. One of the best memes I saw from all of this was uh, the one where it said, it said, as many Africans as you all threw into the ocean, y'all are surprised that a mermaid is black. Mm. And Especially that in the was... Caribbean. Right. Especially in the Caribbean. Yeah, right. Caribbean. In the Caribbean, um, yep. So I, you know, they, they have so many hate groups and I feel bad. I felt bad for this young girl because she's a great actress. Um, you know, I've watched her on earlier House of Pain episodes. Um, she played a role on the TV sitcom Grownish, Um, and I loved her character on there. An amazing vocalist. Just, you can tell she's a really kind spirit. So the hate that she's been getting, they've been setting up groups on Facebook. So this one lady made a video and she was crying. She was like, my little girl, you know, we, we had this mermaid with ginger hair and now my little girl doesn't have that anymore. Your little girl is too. Oh, I'll go sniff glue. Right. Like your little girl is two. She doesn't care. These these children don't, you know, at two and three and four, they don't know, oh, she's a black girl. She's not supposed to be black. They're taught this yeah. by their racist parents. And, you know, this is something, forget the woman king. I am fully going to support this. This is what I'm talking mm-hmm. about when, when they say, you know, empowering these black girls and these black women. So I will be there to support and I will buy tickets for other little girls and I will make sure that my nieces see it. This is what I mean when I say representation matters. And then you have the all lives matter folks are the are the main ones. No, Ariel is supposed to be white with blue eyes, but I thought all lives mattered. Mm. Brett Favre. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, you know, it's it's 
I'm I'm angry. I'm angry because this is her breakout. This is Disney, okay? Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. is her her breakout right here. You know, she she can separate herself from her sister because they've been, you know, a duo for so long and she's doing her own thing and she's fabulous and she's talented and I love her. And she's being like riddled with all of this hate. I'm angry for her. Yeah. So, um and to me uh, you know, I see these groups being set up on Facebook and I'm like, you know, y'all, this is a hate group, but I get put in Facebook jail for much less. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Rock, what you got? Uh, you know, they 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 go do what they go do, man. Yeah. You, you know what I'm gonna say, Keith. My first thought when they made up black, I was like, what's the prince? Is a white boy? Another white boy? So that was, that was my that was, that was, <laughs> That, that was my first thought, and sure enough, it is. I'm like, so look, it's I'm all for her. Uh, hold on, let me take a step back. My son loves um, uh, Spider Verse, Into the Spider Verse with Miles Morales, mm-hmm. and um, he was he was big on it when he was like four years old, right? Mm-hmm. And every time, I'm always like, because uh, you know, in the movie, this is not officially a love story, but he kind of got a thing for Gwen, right, the white girl. Mm-hmm. And my little son loves that movie, and he was at four years old, so I'm like, man, I just wish. I wish he was looking at Miles with another sister. You know what I'm saying? Or yeah. like, like I said, at least, at least Latino. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so he is half like, Latino. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Like because mom. Right. Yeah. Um. So that you know, I mean, it's gonna be a big movie. It's gonna be a big movie. It's gonna do. It's gonna do big numbers. Go break yeah. a billion, obviously, because I'm pretty sure that the next trailer, or the first real trailer, when they show all of that kind of like Avatar water stuff or that, yeah. like the water effects, oh man, it's going to be, I mean, I, and I put money on it. The next one, I doubt it'll have 1.5 because at that point, people got to accept it. I mean, it would just be mad. Well, so I, well, I know what? No, I take that back. You never know with them folks. You never so, know. <laughs> you never know you with never them know. folks. So, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for it. I'm happy for it. I just wish, I just wish you, you know, when the little girls go and they all go, you know, the little boys go as well and see see the little girl loving up on the little brother. But you know, you can't can't get everything. You get Hollywood won't it will never give you, never give you everything. Give you, <laughs> you know, we we'll give you a king. Off. Yeah, we will give you a king, a woman king movie, but they were slave traders. We will give yeah. you Black Panther, but Jeez. you're celebrating the CIA agent uh, stopping those from being, <laughs> you know. Better. So you know, they they never give you everything. It's always a, a, a little catch. So, yeah. but you know. At, at this point, I'm happy for the little girls. Um, I don't have daughters. I got little boys. And I guess that's why my my point of view is kind of like, you know, I'm sure my little boys going to want to see it, which we did. We watched, we watched um, the original one like last year, like late last year we watched it. So we're we going to see it. Yeah, we definitely going yeah. to see it. I'm happy to hear that, Rock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. Well, they got my support. I, I, I'm really excited about seeing her in this movie. Mm-hmm. So, but thank you again, Rock, for coming on, man. Dropping these gems, dropping this knowledge on us about ah, man. Uh, this movie that dude. Oh, and dude, dude. Let me tell you one more thing. I, I forgot to mention yeah. earlier. Henry Louis Gates. Do y'all remember when he was doing that um, that lineage uh, series? He was like yes. uh, like Queen Latifah, and I think a few yeah. other people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There was an episode on the Homie Tribe. The guy was telling him that they was in Benin and the guy was telling him about it. And um, I got the clip. Dude, Henry Lewis Gate was pissed. He was like, they knew what they was doing. And he was pissed when you found out. So yeah. it's like, so uh, I'm, to me, I'm just, all of this has been out there at like one click away, five minute read for people to see. And, and Viola just pushed straight past it. And everybody involved, I'm side eyeing everybody involved. All yeah. of them, yeah. all of them. So wow. it just is what it is, man. And all the black Hollywood who's who's uh, silent too. A lot of them ain't mm. saying that. They ain't saying a word. No, no. I'm surprised. Uh, what's his name? Ain't kept, but then again, uh, let me say this: the backlash from everything happens through social media, mm-hmm. and I've said it time and time again. Who is the biggest and strongest voice on social media? Black mm-hmm. women. And if a Spike Lee or someone like that comes out and says we should not be supporting this, what will happen to him? Oh, they own him. Saying he, he misogynistic, don't want to support sisters. Correct. Oh, they they own him. They own him. They own him. Like Barracudas. So. Mm-hmm. 
But all right, man. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate you coming on, man. No problem. No problem. All right, y'all have a good one. All Thank right, you, you Rock. Thanks, no Rock. problem. Thanks, Rock. All right, man. How do we leave? How do... All right. Thanks again, Rock, for joining us, dropping those gems, as we stated before. Well, we're going to, before we jump into what we normally do every episode, I want to real quick touch on a story that we talked about a few weeks ago, and that was the uh, story about the talk, not talk show, the reality show that was on the own network by Oprah Winfrey called Sweetie Pies. Oh, Uh, snap. uh, Okay. uh, You know, there was a, the owner of Sweetie Pies, uh, Miss Robbie, her son, Tim Norman, he was on the show and also her nephew, Andre Montgomery Jr. Well, Andre Montgomery was killed in uh, 2016 and it came to light that her son, his uncle, Tim Norman was um, involved in it. So he was arrested and he went on trial and it was found just last week that he was guilty of being the mastermind behind the murder of 21 year old nephew, Andre Montgomery Jr. The jury deliberated for three days. Uh, Norman, who already has a prior arrest history record will more than likely serve life in prison. Um, I want to say this and I'm going to be cautious in what I say because I've seen people on platforms and of course our platforms and our platform is not as big as some other platforms but I'm going to be very cautious in what I say but I I do have to say this I do not think the full story is out and I think when the full story does come out if it ever does a lot of people will probably be shocked at who knew when it happened, before it happened, and how it happened. Because I've seen some, I always had a little feeling in the back of my head about this whole story. And then I've seen some YouTube videos of his, of, of Andre's uh, family from his mother's side um, comment after the trial. And I was like, okay, I kind of okay. felt that way, but I feel that story is going to come to light one day. Hopefully I'm wrong, but I just have this feeling that there's more to it. And, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Did you guys know about the verdict on this uh, trial for Tim Norman? Yes. I know. Yeah. I found out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Pretty stupid. <sighs> yeah. Pretty stupid. $450,000 policy on your nephew. And a few days later, he's uh, deleted. <clears throat> and then you're calling the people who are on contract to delete the individual, mm. linking you to possible conspiracy, conspiracy for murder. Huh, okay. Um, it's a lot to digest. Yeah. How how heartless can you be to have your dead brother, your only brother, your dead brother, son murdered? Hmm. You've got to be a sick, demonic individual. Mm-hmm. Over greed. Yeah. Yeah, money. When people say, when you hear older people say that money is the root of all evil, my God. Hmm. Yes, it is. Was he that hard up for money? Because, I mean. Well, he had done a lot of things during the show. There was one instance where he was opening up restaurants in his mother's name, and there was a, what, a $100 million lawsuit she had against him for yeah, doing that. Yeah, that's well chronicled. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would say. Once a criminal, criminal, always a criminal. (sighs) 
So, because when the show started, he had just been released from a good prison stint at that point, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. So, I forgot all yeah. about that. Yeah. Uh, he yeah. won't be released anymore. No, no, he will not. Um, also, I want to send prayers out to Puerto Rico. They're dealing with Hurricane Fiona. This is the second hurricane in what, four years? Is it four years? Yeah, about four. Oh, they really uh, catch What was the last it? one? Um, what was it Rita or something? Like that? Rita, yeah, that was when 2017. our esteemed president went down there uh, taking free throw mm. shots with the uh, toilet oh tissues God. and paper towels oh my God. to the people. Yeah. Okay. So uh prayers out to them. I know that uh I saw a there was a video today I saw where uh, a bridge came apart there in Puerto Rico. Yeah, I saw a whole b- bunch of still photos of the yeah. um destruction to the uh infrastructure there on the island. It's quite extensive. Yeah, quite extensive. Yes. So <sighs> prayers to them. Well, let's go ahead. We haven't done this in a couple of weeks. Let's jump into this top 10. Yay. Ooh, yay. So top 10. We did this about two weeks ago. John picked the top 10 to go against each other on our social media pages. As you know, we post this on our uh, on our stories on Instagram and Facebook and also put up a poll on um, Twitter and <laughs> the Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> it was cartoon theme songs against ew, what was it against? Top Toys, I believe. It was top Yeah. Uh, childhood top, Toys. Childhood Toys. Yes. And cartoon theme songs pulled it out. That was the winner. So since we didn't do 85 last week, we put it off to this week. So that will be the top 10 list for the day. Top 10 cartoon theme songs of all time. Before we get into the list, it is going to be Miss Steph's choice for episode 86. And so now she will pick the two that will go against each other for you guys to vote on in our social media stories stories and Steph what do you have for us today for episode 86 for episode 86 we will have either our top five big time story time with big time stories oh or man. Our, oh, man. our top 10 short desk podcast episodes wow wow Steph Damn, that is really That's out right. the box. You're welcome. Wow. I told y'all I like to go for the jugular with my top tens. Mm. Wow. All top right. five, big time story time with big time story versus top ten short desk podcast episodes. Woo. All righty. Well. That's a doozy. John, you're quiet. If you could see me right now, my uh, <laughs> I do this to you every time. <laughs> Got him speechless. <laughs> my face is firmly resting in the palm of my left hand. <laughs> big this yellow strikes again. Yeah, big yellow. She had it again. Thank you, well. Steph. <laughs> You're welcome. This is going to be fun. All right. Well, let's go ahead and jump into this top 10. Any difficulties in putting this list together, Steph? No, it was actually fun. It was real fun. All right. John? Uh, difficulty putting together the list because I thought uh, I was done with the list, but then a thought popped in my head. Oh, I forgot about this cartoon theme mm-hmm. song. Oh, I forgot about this po- cartoon theme song. So um, I had to cut a lot of them too, John. Yeah. Um, so once I've 
I, I had an idea what was going to be basically my top five. The other five, it was a crapshoot at that particular point who was going to make the the ranking. So, yeah, it was a little bit difficult for me. I'll say that. Yeah, yeah. It, it kept adding on when I thought I was done. I thought I just had 10 and I was like, oh, no, I like this song. Oh, I forgot about this one. And I think there's some more that I missed, but that's all right. Let's go ahead and jump into this. We are going to start off with myself going first. We'll have the middle child going second. (laughs) And John will round us out at third. (sighs) So for this one here, I had a few honorable mentions. Jasmine. (laughs) The first one is Smurfs. Uh, the other one is G.I. Joe. Mm. And the Flintstones made my honorable mentions list. I can't believe I had them in the honorable mentions, but my top 10 was kind of like, eh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, my number 10. Number 10 cartoon theme song of all time. <clears throat> Is Scooby Dooby Doo? Yes, sir. Scooby Dooby Doo. Hey, where <laughs> are you? Yes, that was my problem in doing my where list too. I was singing the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steph, what do you have for us today with your top ten? <sighs> my honorable mentions are Jim. You know, Jim and the Holograph. Oh yeah, oh, man. Um, yes. The Jetsons, even though it wasn't really a song, it was catchy. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Smurfs. It was a song. Yeah, it was a song, but it wasn't much to the song, but it was catchy. Yeah. Um, Jim, the Jetsons, and the Smurfs are my honorable mentions. And my number 10 is Heathcliff. Mm-hmm. Yes. Good choice. Good, good choice. John, what you got for us? All right. I have a few honorable mentions. <clears throat> I know this is not a cartoon, but I love the uh, theme song. It's Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? Oh, yeah. And a Maniacs. Uh, Tiny oh, Toon Adventures. Freakazoid. He Man. Rocco's oh, Modern Life. Man. Sophia the First. The only reason that's on, because I oh, know the oh. whole <laughs> baby girl loved that show when she was very small, mm-hmm. and I memorized the entire theme song. Mm. Um and that damn speed racer. <laughs> uh oh yeah, and as told by Ginger is at the bottom of that list. As told by Ginger, sung by uh Macy Gray. Mm-hmm. Um my number 10 is uh Scooby Doo. Where are you? We got okay. some work to do now. <laughs> All right. Number nine for me is Captain Planet. Okay. <laughs> Go to t- <laughs> Yes. And I'll tell you what, as much as I love that theme song, the best version I've ever heard of that clap- Captain Planet song is my my wife singing the Spanish. It's version. Spanish. Oh wow. my God. That is awesome. Because I, you know, I was like, it came on one day on, I think I was looking at something on YouTube, and she's like, do you want to hear what it sounded like for me as a kid? I was like, what do you mean? She said, well, you know, listening to it in Spanish. And I was like, oh, yeah. And she did it. And I'm like, oh, my God, <laughs> this sounds so much better in Spanish. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's my number nine. You'll pay for this, Captain Planet. <laughs> We're the Planet Tears. You can be one, too. Because saving our planet is the thing, the thing to, to do. do. Looting and polluting is not the way. Here's what Captain Planet has to has say. To say. <laughs> the power is yours. Listen, these kids don't know good TV. They no, don't. Not they at really all. don't. Uh, Steph, what do you got for number nine? I'm trying to appeal in the inner city youth with that one. <laughs> <laughs> the number nine for me is the Animaniacs. All right. Love that show. Have y'all watched the new one, the reboot on Hulu? I haven't. No, I have not. I love it. Yes. Okay. Is it the original I'm, voice actors? I do believe it is. Yeah. Gotta okay. be. And Steven Gotta Spielberg, be. is he's still a director? 
Now that I don't know. Probably he may not. be. Yeah, probably not. Probably or executive, executive producer or something. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But I love it. I loved it. It was like eight episodes. Mm. Okay. All right. What you got, John? My number nine is Inspector Gadget. Oh, how in the hell did I forget about how did Inspector you forget Gadget? That? Damn. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. Inspector Gadget. How did you forget that? I don't <laughs> know. Man. Okay. Number eight. Number eight for me is Heathcliff as well, Steph. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Not to cut in, but John Spielberg did develop it for Hulu, and they do have the original voice actors. I knew they sounded still the same, but okay. I want to look it up and make sure. Okay, that's cool. That is cool. It's Tiny Toon Adventures in about two. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> our song is done. What do you have for number eight, Steph? Inspect the gadget. All right, damn! Thank you guys for making me feel bad. John, what you got? I have the Super Mario Brothers Super Show theme song. Oh. Oh, man. Yeah. That's with Captain Lou Albano, right? Yes. Albino? Wow. Damn. (laughs) I forgot all about that theme song. Okay. That's pretty cool. All right. Number seven for me is Dark Wing Duck. I knew that was going to be on your list. <laughs> Dark I mean, we, <laughs> When there's trouble, you call DW. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, but dangerous. Yeah. You better watch out, you bad boys. <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> Steph, what you got for number seven? You know me so well, Steph, to know that was going to be on my list. I knew it was going to be on your list. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is my number yes. seven. Yes. Uh-huh. All right. John, what's your number seven? My number seven is Thundercats. All right. How that I, I forgot. I forgot. Thunder- Damn. Thundercats. Cats. Uh. Damn. Uh. Thundercats are loose. Ah, man. Thunder, 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 thundercats. Man. Okay. Of course, I said thunder at the time because I had to speak. <laughs> Oh yeah, remember? Oh, I could not pronounce T H. Thunder, 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 thunder cats. Oh, oh man! Truck was fruck. What you say, boy? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Give me back my fruck. Uh, uh, how long did it take for you to get out of that? Uh, not long. They took me to a uh, speech therapist, and they said, "No, nah, it'll clear up on its own." Oh, okay, and eventually it did. Okay, that's good. All right, number six for me. I know you said stuff. This didn't sound, it didn't seem like it was a uh, theme song, but it was for me, and that's the Jetsons. Yes, that was a theme song for me. I loved it. Uh, what you got for number six, Steph? Listen, my older sister hated this song because I went like I remember a stretch of three days just singing it nonstop. Scooby Doo. Mm. <laughs> That's right. I don't know what got into me for those three days, but I sang it nonstop. Zoink. <laughs> yes. Number five. I'm sorry, no, still number six. What you got, number six, John? Uh, number six. I have the Goof Troop theme song. Oh, oh. man, I forgot about that. I'd be so caught yeah. up in the movie. I'd be forget. I forgot about the TV show. Right. <sighs> All right. Goofy has more movies than uh, Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Listen, mm. and I will still say to this day, a Goofy movie is a black movie. It yes. Is. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. yes. Just so we're clear. Yes. Absolutely. It is. Number five for me. It's those Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> turtles in a half shell. Turtle, turtle power. power. Yes. All right. What you got for number five, Steph? The Flintstones. All right. Yes. I like the John, Simpson have... cover. What now? Oh, I like yeah. The, I like when the Simpsons covered it. In uh-huh. the beginning of one of their episodes. Yes. Mm. I still like randomly sing that song. Me too. 
Yeah. Simpson. Homer Simpson. He's the greatest <laughs> from the town of Springfield. He's about to hit a chestnut tree. Yes. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Hey, real quick before I uh before we move on to the next one, I'm, I'm I just happened to randomly look at Facebook and someone made a post that's on my friends list. The woman King was fire. And yes, the movie discussed their participation in the slave trade. Go be great. Complain about it elsewhere. You know, <sighs> our people are just so brainwashed. It's sad. It's sad. But I'm going to be a pick me. Go complain about it somewhere else. Complain about what do you mean about the people that okay? Um, hmm. Let's go with number four. We did, yeah, number four. I haven't even four. done five yet. Oh, you didn't do five? Oh, I'm I sorry. You did it. Were you just singing? I was singing, but I was Steph had gone. Um, oh, last time. So, oh, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm oh, that's right. Show. You did the Simpsons version. That's yeah, right. Sorry. Okay. What's your number five? My bad. Uh, Darkwing Duck. Yes, sir. Okay. DW. You know, my, I always like when he went against the the yellow Darkwing. I forgot oh, yeah. his name. Me too. Yeah. I thought they were supposed to be bringing that back to Disney Plus, but I ain't seen it yet. So, I don't really need to. Yeah. Yeah. All right, number four. Number four for me is that damn DuckTales in Duckburg. <laughs> <laughs> Love that theme song. Love the intro video for that cartoon. Everything made me believe that I could jump in a, a vault full of golden coins without breaking <laughs> my spine <laughs> as a kid. So... Really oh, love that. The things uh, you overlook as a child. Yes, yes. Miss Steph. Number four for me is Chippendale. Oh, the yes. The Rescue Rangers. Love it. Love, love it. it. Thank God for Disney Plus. Oh, I love that movie. Did you see it? Yes, yes. I loved it. it I really amazing. did. But I get to watch the originals too, so. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Joe, what you got for number four? I got Ooh, tailspin. Jesus. Excuse me. Ah, <laughs> mm-hmm. I forgot about tailspin. Damn. Dang. How did I forget about tailspin? Oh, yeah, tailspin. Oh, oh yeah. yo. <laughs> Spit it. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Damn, I miss tailspin. Okay. All right. Thanks, John. Damn. All right. Number three, Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Woo! Hey. <laughs> Loved it. I think that was the start of that block on Fox in the afternoon when I got out of school. One of the greatest blocks of all time. Yes. Oh, man. For kids shows. Yes. Mm-hmm. Damn, Fox had the kids show and Thursday nights on, on, on lock. Sure now that did. I think about it. Yeah, mostly Disney, uh, that Disney block. Yeah, because it was Tailspin, Chip and Dale, yeah, Darkwing Duck. Yeah, Gargoyles. And then they had they had Power Rangers and then Batman. Oh, Batman. And they eventually they took on Superman. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, what you got, Steph, for number three? If you know me, you know how much I love this bear. He is my baby. The new adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Uh, I forgot about Winnie the Pooh. Man, I did not. I'm surprised that wasn't your number one. A lot of people are going to be surprised that's not my number one. <laughs> um, I do want to say this, and I made this confession. My wife thought I was drunk because we had took one class that really had me kind of tipsy, but this was way after. I honestly believe after further consideration and being on a Disney cruise on a Disney cruise, they have like a mini version of the Disney plus on the TV Mm -hmm. with all these different movies, you know, and everything. I think Christopher Robin may be my favorite Disney movie of all time. Really, I just love 
love, love that movie. And it just gives me chills every time I see, you know, when Winnie the Pooh came, was sitting on that bench. And then when he went, when Christopher Robin went back and all of them were hiding because they thought he was a Huffalump and, Mm -hmm. and all of them was in there, you know, um, Tigger and, and I love Eeyore and Eeyore. John is the living version of Eeyore guys. If you don't know, if you want to see Eeyore in the Christopher Robin movie, that's John. (laughs) Every time he talked, he sound like John to me. (laughs) I was sitting there and I was just like, wait, who is this guy talking like? Because he was like, oh, just put me out here to be the one to, to get caught by the alpha. Oh <laughs> yeah, that's, that sounds like something I would say. Oh, my God. I said, oh, my God, it's John. Oh, John. Don't, don't let him talk about you like that. I'm, I'm used to it. It's damn near 30 years of this shit. <laughs> I mean, he's laughing hard too. It was just, it just came over me because, because Eeyore was just like so deadpan, and you didn't know if he was being like, if he was being sarcastic or if he was joking. You know, you just didn't know. It was just, oh, it was hilarious. But yeah, I'm sorry, I went on a rant about (laughs) Christopher Robin. I just, I I love that movie. I, I I didn't realize. Was he grown up in that movie? Yes. Okay. Uh, what's the guy's name? Is it Ewan or Ewan McGregor? Mm-hmm. He's the one that plays the um, adult version of Christopher Robin. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's a great movie. Great movie. Uh, Steph? No, it's John. John? Well, number, number three? Yeah. Okay. Chip and Dale. Chip, 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 chip and Dale. Rescue, Rescue Rangers. Rangers. Yes. Okay. Um... Number two. Number two for me is Hong Kong Fooey. Oh, man. Yes. Listen, Hong Kong Fooey was black, y'all. He was. Um, (laughs) The guy that did his voice, Scatman. I forgot his last name, but his name is Scatman. He was was actually, you remember that movie? I don't know if you guys have seen it. The Shining with Jack Nicholson. Mm Mm-hmm. He was the black guy that was it. He did Hong Kong. Oh, okay. And they were working on a remake for so many years. It was going to be a movie. And Eddie Murphy was supposed to voice Hong Kong Fui, but it never came to fruition. So, but yes, Hong Kong was black. (laughs) All that jive talk. He talked back. (laughs) My favorite thing about that cartoon. That's one of my top cartoons. I think we did a top 10 and that was either one or two. I don't remember, but. Mm -hmm. The way he would jump into the desk drawer and and then jump out and he'd been unchanged from his janitor outfit to his kung fu <laughs> outfit and bounce into his car. He never ever could beat anybody up. It was always the cat, but I love it. Oh him. man. I wonder if that's where Martin got his inspiration for um uh Dragonfly. 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 Yeah. But anyways, that's my number two. Mm-hmm. Steph, what you got for number two? For number two, I have DuckTales. All right. Yes. John, what you got for number two? Number two, I have the Ninja Turtles. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Number one, we're down to the nitty gritty. Mm-hmm. My number one will always and forever be the greatest theme song of all time. Fat Albert in the game. Um, oh, man. How did I forget that? I had so I was many that yesterday. but yet I I forgot so many too. Yes, I, I forgot one too that I really love, which was a Ghostbusters theme song. Mm-hmm. I can't be- believe I forgot that, but Fat Albert and the Gang is my forever number one theme song of all time. Gonna have a good time. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, nah. So okay, mm-hmm. Steph, number one. For number one, for me, is the Proud Family. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for Clarity People, that is Solange's song, not it Destiny is. Child, not Beyonce. Solange. They were background singers, right? They were. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's an excellent song. Excellent song. John, 
what is your number one? My favorite theme song of all time for cartoons is DuckTales. Uh, I struggled with one and two. So I almost had DuckTales at one, but I was like, nah, I like that Proud Family song. <laughs> um, Proud Family almost made the top 10. Hell, the real Gus- Ghostbusters almost made the top 10. But Yeah. I forgot yeah. to mention them on my audible mentions, but yeah, Ghostbusters should have been in my top 10 somewhere. So it's all good. That just, you know, we, we have uh, so many things that so many good shows and theme songs that we grew up with that, you know, we couldn't fit them all in the list. And hell, it's been 30 years since we watched them all, you know, right. on a consistent basis. So, all right. This was fun. I'm so glad that we were able to get back together and do this again. Before we get out of there, I know that, um, you know, we've been away for a little minute as far as what we've been doing. Just want to, guys, let you know that we are still doing the YouTube show. Episode six dropped last week and um, it was a fun one. So please check us out. On our channel, the Short Desk Podcast, we also have started back up. We still like sports. Episode one of that dropped um, two weeks ago. We'll be back with that on Friday. You'll hear the new episode drop on Friday. So we'll still like sports with Dwayne, um, John, Steph, and myself. So please, please, a uh, lot of content that we're putting out. We thank you all for the support that you guys are giving us. Steph, can you please give us our highlight city of the week for support? Our city for this week, and I I put some cities in a hat and drew this one out. Well, not a hat, a cup. But um, (laughs) it uh, is actually the city that I was born in, Sumter, South Carolina, with a population of 43,463 people. And our notable people who are from Sumter, uh, NBA star Ray Allen, NBA star John Morant, and uh, actor Jay Ellis of The Game and Insecure. So Ah, thank you, Sumter. Hey, real mm-hmm. quick stuff. I know this may mm-hmm. be like, well, damn. I know it ain't that big, but that don't mean I know them. Mm-hmm. Do you know where they grew up at? Were they anywhere near where you lived or, you know, in the area um, where you were from in there? Yes. Ray Allen actually wasn't born in Sumter, but he was raised there. Um, and uh, he went to Hillcrest High School. It's about All of these places are about 20 minutes from me. John Morant is actually from uh, this community called Dazelle. And my niece lives there, so I'm, I'm very familiar with Dazel. And Jay, At, um, Jay Ellis grew up uh, a Shaw Air Force Base because his father was in the military. So, okay, yeah, very cool. Thank you for that, Steph. We will be back next week for episode 86. This this top ten or top five that you guys uh, will vote on is really <laughs> going to man. It's going to have me go back and listen for sure to some episodes um yeah it's gonna be crazy i i I wanted to get to something this week but i still have it saved because we're gonna dive deep into it next week um uh, an impromptu another impromptu conversation and then um you know we come back with a story time with big time story and how poetic would it be with the turn of (laughs) The big t- story time, with big time, and that's the top five. For ah. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. I just, I just want you fellas to put on your thinking caps for these top ten. So ah. you're welcome. Hey, thanks for sending that TikTok stuff. Oh yes, um, we I actually got that from Jasmine, mm. and when she sent it, I said I'm sending this to John. That's your, that's your tribe. It's your people. Thank you, Jasmine. Sleep paralysis <laughs> for ten <laughs> minutes. 10 minutes. Oh man, when she said she felt like she had peanut butter in her mouth, I said, Let me send this to John. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Very scary. Very scary. Yes. Steph, have you ever had one? I have. Okay. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. I had one uh, since my father passed that was quite um, interesting. Yeah. But we're going to leave those stories for John. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, Thank you guys again for your support. 
supporting the short disc podcast. We are so greatly appreciate appreciative appreciate appreciative of it all. We are the short disc podcast. Holla at your girl and your boys. Have you ever been or had something happen to you that was so racist that you didn't even get mad? You were just like, God damn, that was racist. It was so blatant. You were just like, wow, like it didn't even happen to you. It was like a fucking movie. <laughs> like you was watching Mississippi Burning. That oh. happened to me. I was in Mississippi doing the show and I go to the restaurant to order some food. And I say to the guy, I would like to have. And before I even finish my sentence, he said, the chicken. What the oh. fuck? I could not believe it. This man was absolutely right. I said, how did he know I was going to get the chicken? So I asked him, how'd you know that? How'd you know I was going to get some chicken? He looked at me like I was crazy. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Now, everybody knew as soon as you walk through the goddamn door, you're going to get some chicken. It's no secret down here that blacks and chickens are quite fond of one another. Then I finally understood what he was saying, and I got upset. I wasn't even mad. I was just upset. I wasn't ready to hear that shit. All these years, I thought I liked chicken because it was delicious. Turns out I'm genetically predisposed to liking chicken. <laughs> <laughs>